I also stream games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash chrisware. Hi folks, so I've been uh, thinking about making a video on this topic for quite some time and today I came across a blog post that was put out by Disroot that kind of prompted me to make this video today. It's always nice when that happens. Um, this is going to be a bit of a rambly uh, video so don't expect anything too succinct. I, I wasn't really planning on, on, on doing uh, anything in particular rather than just share my thoughts and, and, and um, you know that kind of thing, as I do in many of these videos on this channel. So anyway, uh, just to get you uh, all folks up to speed, just to get you folks all up to speed rather, uh, what is Disroot to begin with? Disroot is, as they define by themselves, Disroot is a platform providing online services based on principles of freedom, privacy, federation and decentralization. No tracking, no ads, no profiling, no data mining. Uh, and they run services like Jitsi, uh, they run an XMPP chat, which I'm going to cover later on. Um, they also run like a paste bin, uh, email, you know, all these kind of stuff that are generally free and open source services um, in order to help make the digital world a better place. Now, there are several services similar to Disroot that offer various different services. Uh, this isn't about Disroot. Disroot is just the sort of the jumping off point from this. But I use a lot of services on, um, for example, Snopatar. Um, and there is a whole collective of lots of different servers of, of the, that run these open source services for the the um, you know for um, usually on a on a donation basis to actually just you know make the world a better place and 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 these people should be highly commended and they are uh, jewels of the the free and open source community. There's no doubt about it. So the there was a blog post that was put up a couple of weeks ago. That it was put up fourteenth uh, of October, so a couple of weeks ago from from this video. Uh, and it's, uh, it covers the switching off of Matrix and Diaspora in uh, among the, the services. Now, I'm not going to cover Diaspora so much because it's, that's its, its own thing. And I want to talk a little bit about text chat today, Matrix and XMPP. So, as they say here, as you might remember, two years ago, we have decided to no longer provide Matrix as a server. Reason for that decision, apart from a growing unaddressed privacy concerns, was also the huge server resources needed to operate what is essentially a text-based chat application. We have decided to go back to the roots and rather focus on providing XMPP as our go-to chat solution. Since the announcement, we have been slowly removing inactive accounts. At this moment, we are left with only a handful of users, but still the amount of resources that are used is unacceptably big. Our current matrix server happily consumes about five gigabytes of RAM database RAM usage not included, or not counted, and takes 170 gigabytes of database storage. We find this a tremendous waste of resources and so have decided it's time to shut the lights off. And so by the 1st of December, we will switch off our matrix server entirely. We hope those who are still using it understand our decision and we hope they will find a new home on another home server. So, um, Basically, I kind of, you know, get where they're coming from and, and in many ways sort of agree with their decision. I think that it raises a, uh, a rather important question when it comes to free and open source services, which is the, how much is it, how, men, how much in the way of resources can you expect someone to, to self-host, right? Uh, if you make a, doesn't matter how free and open source and, 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 and well audited all the code is and all that kind of stuff, if a piece of software takes a tremendous amount of resources to run, it is going to become more exclusionary the larger it gets. And I've always been fond of the older technologies that use mu mu you know fewer resources um, and are generally by and large simpler. And it comes down to a, you know, you don't necessarily need something that is as all-encompassing as maybe some proprietary counterparts. It's always important to bear in mind, right? Proprietary platforms are designed for an entirely different purpose than open source ones. Proprietary platforms are designed with uh, profiteering in mind, with, with, with money in mind, with exploiting you for their gain in mind, right? So the starting point isn't how do we make a good service. The starting point is how do we make money off something that, that people need, right? That's an entirely different starting point to the open source equivalent, which is how do we fix a problem, right? And that's why I'm a, a, a free and open source software advocate is because you start from a better place, right? With something even like Discord, for example, the proprietary equivalent here, right? What you've got is a money making machine, a business that is uh, that is sort of masquerading as a chat platform, 
right? Its first job is to make money. Its first job is not to provide a, uh, a text chat, right? We have to bear in mind, text chat is the most simplest of online services to provide. IRC has been around since 1988, and there were protocols that, that that's built on that have existed long before that. Right, that's that's before many of you folks were born. Right, so IRC, which is not bad, I quite like IRC. IRC is centralised by all definitions, but it's simple, it's accessible. People can host it on, I'd imagine, very low end hardware. Uh, and I would, it would be interesting. That the the only reason I feel, and I could be wrong on this, please correct me in the comment section below if I am, that IRC isn't hosted on more servers like Snopatar, like this route, is simply because having Freenode as a big one is like it's fine. Right, it's only text at the end of the day. It's only, uh, you know, it, it's it, it takes minimal resources. It's easy enough to set up in the event of, you know, if if, if free node goes down tomorrow, then there'll be there's another one and another one and another one. Like like it's just not. It's so easy to manage in terms of resources. That's just not an issue. And then of course with free node as well, the the big issue with IRC in a lot of cases is spam. You know, there's a lot of things that spam chat because it's so it's easy to use, it's so accessible, so many clients can feed into it. Uh, that it's easy if if people collectively come together with with something like IRC, and then they collectively manage um, spam in, in that regard. It's not going to work ten times out of ten, but it's going to you know you're 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 fighting from a position of strength when you've got more eyes on the problem. So you know IRC in some ways kind of makes sense that it works out the way that it works out. There are plenty of smaller servers smaller servers for uh, IRC like Geekshed for example, which is pretty good in my experience. Um, I think Jupiter Broadcasting use Geekshed, and I'm not certain on that one. Um, and they don't seem to have updated their website in quite some time. But that's that's the slow moving nature of IRC, which is quite a, you know a real time text chat, which is quite interesting. But yeah, like the thing is, like a lot of the clients on IRC and Afteroid, for example, on the mobile platform, you know, they haven't been updated in five years. Do they need to be? You know, you're talking about a platform that's been around since the 80s. How many bugs are there left to fix at this stage? You know, it's pretty feature complete for all it is. Um, so anyway, I'm not here to talk about IRC, despite the, the merits that it has. The demerits, of course, are naturally that it is kind of tech, you know, it is technical to use. Like it's not as quick and easy to go as, 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 as Discord. It's not far off, in my opinion. Then again, I'm pretty comfortable with adapting to new technologies. I'm sure many of you folks are, are at home. Uh, so, you know, how something appeals to the, the bloke on the street that's you know that's that's not always the the, the thing that I, I would say I'm most qualified for because I can pick up something that's not necessarily you know I'm not hugely technical I'm not I'm, I'm not a technical specialist or anything like that um I I would say I sit somewhere in the middle between a, an advanced user and a uh you know a, a a lay person you know I'm somewhere in the middle right intermediate I would I, I would call myself um, but yeah, I'd, I'd feel I feel pretty comfortable picking up an IRC. Although, admittedly, there's a little bit of a learning curve every time. Every, like, every time I pick it up again after not using it for several months, um, it, I, I do have to go through the documentation again, re, you know, refresh the commands and all that kind of stuff. So there is that. Anyhow, this route have decided that instead of Matrix, they're going to go with XMPP. Now, XMPP is a wonderful technology. I believe Google Talk was based on it, uh, as well as many others. And it was used, and then usually when it gets quite big, as as a technology, it's wonderful. But sometimes when, like, for example, Google Talk used it, I think it's Google Talk or Google Chat, I'm going to call it Google Talk. Uh, it, Google uh, used to be interoperable with other XMPP clients and other XMPP servers. And then at a point, they decided to close it off and become proprietary and more closed in. Um, why they did this... I honestly, I don't know. You know, it's why sometimes people think that they're going to do the same thing with things like Gmail or whatever. But uh, in a lot of cases, it could be for technical reasons. They wanted to add more features into their their chat network, and and making it a closed environment might very well have, um, you know, have 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 been the the obvious way to avoid a lot of complications in that regard. Possibly, I don't know. Okay, so where does this put us today? Well, all things aside. XMPP still exists as a, a very established, quite an old protocol that many people do use today, and it has many advantages over Matrix. Um, I'm sure that there are reasons or advantages that Matrix have over XMPP as well, so I'm not going to try and make it out that XMPP is wonderful and, and Matrix is not, because Matrix is pretty good. I like it, I like that it exists, and uh, it's a lot newer, which means that it's got a lot more time to work on its act, it's got a lot more time to become uh, more efficient with its resource use and more accessible 
available to more people. Also, like Matrix can appeal to a different user base as well. For example, Matrix might be better in corporate environments. It might be better, you know, with 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 use from from like governments and governmental departments. Whereas XMPP might be better uh, as a home uh, for home usage, and and you know, so, so there's different, you know, it's horses for courses in this regard. Uh, I don't think that one being good necessarily reflects on the quality of the other. Uh, but one difference between them that is highly noticeable is server uh, you, you, the 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 amount of resources it takes to run on the server. This is important because a lot of the sort of disroot style communities, uh, you know, similar to Snopatar, and I'm sure there are countless others that I'm blanking on a little bit. I'm sure many of you folks would um, could mention them down in the comment section below. Many of them do offer XMPP as a chat feature, but most of them don't offer uh, Matrix. Um, some do, but XMPP, in my experience, seems to be more widely offered, and it seems to be because it's just less of a load on, on server. That in and of itself should make us think about the accessibility of this software, that more people can run it on their own devices. Maybe, I've no, you know, I'm not familiar with the kind of resources required to run XMPP. Maybe it could run on a Raspberry Pi on a home server. Maybe it can run on a five pound digital ocean droplet or whatever like that, but it's definitely lighter. Most of the time, all we need is a, t a text chat room. That's like most of the time, that's all we need, right? It's a very basic requirement. IRC can do it, XMPP can do it, and Matrix can do it, which can do it at the lowest resources. Probably maybe IRC per person when you split it up. But XMPP is great. Like XMPP as well, one of the big advantages of that in practice, now we're not even talking about principle now, but in practice, is that it is more dispersed. Uh, I'm in a, a, a an XMPP room that uh, that I set up recently, uh, and you know, there's there's a there's I don't know half a dozen of us in there, and I believe all of us or most of us are from like different um, domains from different servers, and we're all communicating together in this one room. Uh, I understand that that can be you know like with with well with Matrix, most people are from the Matrix.org uh, home server. Now, in many ways, it doesn't necessarily bother me that somewhere like Matrix, the Matrix home server, Matrix.org, is by far and away the biggest, and it's sort of, in some ways, in practice, quite centralised, because as long as you've got the option to self-host, as long as the option is there, um, and the option is readily available, then that's kind of fine. There are advantages to centralization. It's a meeting point. It allows, um, you know, like a, the pooling of resources and things like that rather than the scattering of them. But then there are also advantages to the scattering of them. So, for example, with XMPP, if one server goes down, the, the wider network of it all just, just barely, it doesn't even blink. It doesn't even register because there are so many different servers out there hosting XMPP instances. Also, another advantage of XMPP, wider choice of clients. Um, now, there are some clients available for Matrix and the like, but at the end of the day, uh, XMPP has been around long enough that many of the clients are just available in the repository of any standard Linux distribution. Uh, you could probably pick one up as an app image. Um, I, I just use Dino, 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 which is available in the Ubuntu repositories. Uh, and I'm sure it is in, 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 I think it's in the repositories of like Fedora and all the others as well. It's just, you know, it's, it's a good application, looks kind of nice, functions nice, you know, functions rather well. Um, but you don't like that? I'm sure, I mean, I don't, you know, I'm sure there's a command line XMPP server. Um, is it Finch, perhaps, or something? I don't know. And it, again, if any of you folks have any good XMPP clients that you'd like to, to bring to the, uh, you know, bring to the class, uh, let, let, let us know down in the comment section below. I, I mean, even you can even use Pigeon, which comes with a number of uh, Linux distributions pre-installed. Now, it's not th that's not the most full-featured. You're not going to be able, you know, it's not going to be great to administrate uh, large rooms and things like that with but if you just want to join in and chat pigeons are fine you know and it embeds with the system nicely so that's great you know um, and it's not that difficult to get your head if you can get your head around email you can get your head around XMPP um, you know it's it's just it's just email in instant messaging form also another good thing about it on the mobile great on battery the conversations app which is I think is the most popular one it's certainly the one that I use in the Fdroid store um, that's that's just a really good app like it, it just has all the features I need and it just works the exact way that you want it to work it looks nice and it runs nice uh, also with conversations what I quite like about it is that you can actually sign up for a conversations account that runs on XMPP there's also I think it's called Movim which is another service where you just you can sign up with us with an app so you just you know you can get an app and you can sign up with that app, um, 
So you don't even there is there, there's not really that disconnect between an account and an app, which is a lot of the um, uh, issues that, that that newer users might tend to have. Now I'm not necessarily advocating that XMPP is something that we should necessarily be pushing on on your, your bloke in the street because at the end of the day, text chat is text chat. Like um, uh, it, it's not it's not the hill that you want to die on. I would say maybe I'm wrong, uh, but um, but for those of us that are interested in uh, ethical technologies and, and 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 good practice with uh, digital communication. I think XMPP is the place to go. Maybe Matrix might be a better place. Um, it, you know, and it's perhaps not there now. Maybe in a couple of years' time, it might be the the place that we can migrate people away from Discord. It might take a few more system resources. It might be a little bit more centralized in practice, but it's better than Discord. Like you know, we've got to make these incremental steps at a time. The shock factor of taking someone out of a world of Discord and throwing them into a world of IRC is 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 like throwing someone in cold water. It's like it's it's going to be so much of a shock they're not going to want to be there. Um. So, but I think you know as a, as a technology, you know, with XMPP, it's 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 a great technology that you can put stuff on top of. You can build stuff on. You can you know build apps, include them into services, and all this kind of stuff. And in practice, it, it, it is very decentralized. I really like it. So I have set up a room so we can talk about stuff that we do talk about on this channel. See, I thought about doing maybe an IRC room, a matrix room. I'm going with XMPP. I did put a poll up on Mastodon. Should I use matrix? Should I use IRC? And I was surprised at the number of writing candidates uh, that, that wanted XMPP. Um, so I, I decided, yeah, I, I don't expect the room is going to be hugely f furnished with loads of people. But for those of you that want somewhere to go uh, when you're running XMPP, um, then yeah, I'll put what I'll do is I'll put the details down in the description because the thing is with uh, running these kind of chat rooms is that they can be a little bit uh, time consuming to moderate and, and what have you. So I don't necessarily know how long this room is going to run for. And if I take out the details in the description, uh, then you can assume that the room has sort of been closed and, and, and things have moved on. It's fine, you know. Um, uh, but uh, but for the for the time being, I think yeah, let's have a room. Let's talk about some of the the great open suit, open source and distributed technologies available on the internet. There, um, but yeah, you know, and I think that having something that runs well, that is lightweight and and doesn't have too much bloat. I mean, at the end of the day, we're talking text chat. We're talking text chat. It's not shouldn't be complicated. It should it should be something that is it, it is something that's been around for decades upon decades upon decades. Um, we shouldn't necessarily be requiring gigabytes of memory to to be facilitating this. And at the end of the day, do we need to keep a record of every single text message that was ever sent? That doesn't sound like a healthy way to do things anyway. Just you know, at the end of the day, fire off a message to someone, right? In in how many instant messengers in five years' time are going to be relevant? Zero, zero. That's why on Mastodon, for example, I set my um, uh, messages to get deleted after a certain period of time. It's like two weeks or something. Because how long is a post on social media relevant after two weeks? If it's more relevant than that, I'll put it on my website. As simple as that. I think it's really unhealthy as a society, as a digital society, to to archive all of these things. They can only ever be used against you. Like at the end of the day, what if I've got an opinion like, oh, I don't know, I don't think robots should have the right to vote. And then in 50 years' time, I'm like, oh, yeah, that that bigoted old Chris 50 years ago. What, what a simpleton. You know, it's like the, the, con the, 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 the message remains the same, but the context of the world around it changes. And just I'm just using that as a I, that's not that's not a political commentary on anything today. That's just that's just a, a off the top of my head example. But yeah, um, you know, I don't maybe I don't think robots could vote, should be able to vote. But maybe maybe my mind might be open to the possibility if if a good argument comes along. There you go. I protected I protected myself from those pesky robot rights activists <laughs> okay sorry i'm getting myself okay i'm getting silly now but it's um but anyway it remains the same um it remains the same that yeah like sensible technology doesn't have to be more than it is and there are people you, know, you know i think one of the hurdles for uh ethical technology is, is price it's cost it's money i mean the reason i got into free and open source software in the first place is because i couldn't afford proprietary software like we have an uh, you know um we have a uh should we we have a i, I don't want to necessarily say appeal because that makes it sound like like we're a product but like we are accessible to people because of the the, the price of you know of free software uh, by and large so you know you, you pay some money for free software but we are accessible to 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 people who don't have a lot of money um, and, and and that becomes more difficult when you've got to start paying server costs so things that run on 
you know, your five pound digital ocean droplet and things like that. That's important, right? You know, having all this free and open source software that's available to people that cannot afford Photoshop or, or, or movie editing software, or stuff like that. And then suddenly it turns around and then suddenly self hosting stuff on, on, on servers becomes a lot more expensive. Um, and, 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 you know, because it, like hosting stuff from your home as well, I've never been fond of doing that. Uh, I, sometimes I have stuff on, on, like I'll spin up a home server, uh, that won't leave the house. It'll just be like, it'll just be local, local stuff. Um, I don't like having holes in my firewall, you know, maybe it's a superstitious thing. Maybe I'm just like paranoid or something, tinfoil hat wearing or something. But if I, if I want to run something that I want to access from multiple computers in multiple locations, I'll do a digital ocean droplet. It's as simple as that. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I know people like, I know, I know, um, I don't want to out anyone at the moment, but I know some people who, who I, I spend a lot of time with who are perfectly quite happy, uh, to, to run stuff on their own home network and, and, and poke a hole through their firewall, firewall for it. But, um, I think with me, it's just a confidence issue. I'm not necessarily confident in my ability to, to, uh, uh administrate with the degree, you know, with, with, with a degree of confidence and security, but you know, that's just me. Maybe I need to um uh, you know learn uh but anyway <laughs> or just use a five dollar five dollar five pound a, a, you know the the lower tier uh, digital ocean droplet droplet but yeah a lot of these like uh, ethical communities for free and so open source software do run xmpp as a chat option whereas they would struggle to afford um a matrix and they do most of the same job. Like there are some things that Matrix can do that XMPP can't. But in my opinion, these these are these are like negligible. You don't need image hosting, for example. You can link to an Imga, right? Or 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 you can send. You know, it doesn't matter. You don't. You can work out other options for things like that. Um, and in fact, some of them have their own image hosting solutions anyway, and it's all this kind of stuff. But yeah, like uh, most of the time, you're just firing off text messages to each other, and I think. Um, and, and I think if you can find a low resources way to do that, you, you should. Anyway, this is turning into a bit of a ramble, but like I said, details of my IR, uh, my XMPP room are down below. I'll put in my XMPP address as well if you guys don't want to join the room, but you just want to shoot me a message. Um, it's open. I can't necessarily promise I'll be super quick to respond, but I'll probably be, I'll do my best. You know, I've got it on my phone and I've got it on my uh, computers here. Um, and that's great, you know, that's the thing as well, there are others, there are like, for example, Tox, T-O-X, uh, which is a really good protocol, because it is quite anonymous, uh, it's all local, like it genuinely is decentralized, you are the host and the the, the, the app, so, you know, the in the application, you've got the host and the server, like the client and the server, uh, you've got the, you've got both all in, all in one. The trouble with that is that you can't have it across multiple devices, right? So you set up Tox on your phone, you set up Tox on your, your desktop, you've got two addresses, one for your one device and one for the other you can't sync it across the two maybe there's a way but it, in my opinion it's never worked um or i've never managed to make it work and i don't think it seems supposed to work like that like it is supposed to be this is an instance of the software you can talk with other instances of the software or that kind of business as well and if you new can pave a, a hard drive there's a good chance that you might lose it as well although maybe there are ways to back it up i'm not entirely certain anyway it gets a bit complicated in that regard great piece of software very interesting in how it works um but it's um, I don't know. It just it's it's it also as well because you're you're sending direct messages as well rather than through a server. Uh, battery usage on things like talk, talks on mobile phones can be quite a drain. So anyway, I'm not super familiar with the protocol, so feel free to correct any um any issues with you know anything I've said on that that regard. Um, but like I say, is it interesting protocol? And there are actually quite a few um clients available for talks as well, which is is, is kind of interesting. Um, uh, maybe on the command line, I think. I've, if memory serves me correctly, there might be one on the... Anyway, I'm continuing to ramble, despite the fact that I said that I'd stop. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, XMPP. I think there's a lot to be said for it, and, um... Uh, it's, it's not too difficult to, you know... And what, what I'll try and do, if I can remember, is I'll put a link to places where you can sign up for an XMPP account down in the, uh, description below. Uh, so that you guys can um, try it out. Anyway, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Wayne, and you've been awesome. Toodaloo. If you'd like to support the content on this channel, I have a LibraPay account. It's like Patreon, but open source.